Hey everyone, Andy here, and today I'm checking out the brand new Nokia Ozo. Uh, really excited to have this uh, new 360 or virtual reality camera here at Able. We've been supporting other uh, 360 rigs for a while now, uh, which are composed of multiple cameras and different configurations, uh, which do a lot of great things. And uh, this is Nokia's sort of answer to that in a sense that they really simplified the process. There's not six cameras or eight cameras, just one with multiple lenses, multiple sensors, right? So this is a fully integrated professional solution, really the first of its kind at this level. So really great to have it here at Able. Uh, I want to give you a quick rundown of the camera, how it works, and some of the sort of post stuff along with operation that goes with the computer. So I'll, I'll run through that with you uh, right now. Uh, so we have eight uh, cameras all together. Uh, and eight sensors, 2K by 2K each. And we also have eight microphones, right? So it's also recording 3D sound, which is also pretty amazing. Uh, the, the cameras are oriented to see the full, the full 360 space, uh, even behind itself. Uh, but note it, it, it only has a 2D on, on the sides and the back. 3D is really just straightforward because of the way it's arranged. Uh, but it's also sort of a dead space back here. It does see behind itself, but uh, right close to it here, it can't see, but that's where we're placing all of our media and outputs and even this bracket sort of angled off to sort of hide the pieces back here, and that works out really well. So that's the configuration, uh, pretty cool setup. Uh, if you're wondering about lens caps, it does come with something to cover all the lenses at once. This is a little carbon fiber uh, cap, pretty cool uh, in itself. All right, so going to the back of it, how do you operate the thing? Well, I have it on a C-stand here, so bear with me. Uh, it's pretty simple to operate, and it's pretty amazingly simple. Uh, first, the slot here is where you put the, ma the battery and the media cartridge. It's actually one piece, which is a little unusual. It's in a little dock there. This is the battery, and it'll run it for at least an hour. Uh, and inside that is a little media cartridge, which I can kind of pull out here, like so. So you could just use the battery without the media and record externally, which I'll show you in a minute. Or, or you know, take this out and download the media and put another media cartridge in. So. Uh, it's separated, it separates, but off you go. There's a little latch down here to secure it into it and lock it down nice and secure. Now we're ready to go. I can go ahead and turn it on, and I'll go ahead and lower it so you can see that. Uh, this little on switch here, uh, and I'll go ahead and start boot booting up. Uh, really simple interface here, actually just three buttons. On switch, the middle button is to turn on or off Wi-Fi. Uh, also under here is a power plug, so you can plug it into the wall instead of using battery. Uh, hopefully, this is just 12 volts, so hopefully we can get other options, uh, battery, battery power and external options as well uh, via that plug. So uh, that's the configuration. It's a very simple camera. I put it on a C-stand because I wanted to keep it nice and narrow. You could put it on a tripod, but uh, you, you don't want to see too much of that in the shot. So that's why I kept it really small like this. One last note here. Uh, this is a DIN output. If you want to get to standard uh, BNC for SDI cable, 3G SDI cable, uh, this is a DIN to BNC adapter, plug it in, and we can go right into our uh, recorder box here. The great thing about this device is it's both a recorder, SSD recorder, uh, as well as it has the ability to take the signal in uh, via Thunderbolt into my Mac Pro here, right? So it's allowing me to live preview the stream at the same time. Uh, again, the quality is the same here or on the device. So SDI is coming in here now, and I'll go ahead and start the recording. So the signal's coming into my computer now, and as you can see, I actually have all the angles coming in. Here's all eight in this piece of software, which is called the Ozo Remote. A couple second delay, just being processed live and outputted here, and you can see each angle. Uh, and I'll go ahead and make it square here, and actually d dive into one and actually move around the space. You can see my whole little studio here, right? So pretty cool. That's the whole setup. My head will be kind of cut off here and there, but uh, for a preview, it's really pretty impressive. Uh, all right, so there's, uh, there's that. On the side, I can actually set some capture settings, adjust exposure time, uh, shutter speed, and white balance. Uh, that's pretty much all it has right now, pretty limited. But uh, in time, we'll add more features there. But really, not much to change in the system. It's really just, a, again, all in focus. Uh, just, you're basically just adjusting exposure and white balance, and that's it. We also have uh, storage time remaining, temperature of the actual unit, uh, audio monitoring, battery monitoring, etc. cetera. Uh, it can also work with a head-mounted display uh, or we call it an Oculus or you know an Oculus Rift. This this will work currently with the uh, Oculus Rift uh, Dev 2. Uh, hopefully in the future, as the new ones come out, the new head, uh, the new displays will have support for that as well. But for now, this Dev 2 works. So you hit this little HMD button, 
and you can look around in the space, which is really impressive. So that's happening live right here. Pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just roll, roll for a couple seconds just for this test. So go ahead and stop. Go ahead and turn off the camera so it, when it's done. This will turn itself off, close up all the files, and go ahead and eject the media here and put it in my dock here. You could just pull the media out of there as well and just plug it in USB, just USB 3 media, uh, and it will mount up. Now, the program that I'm going to use to actually uh, stitch together the software, well, or create a preview of the software for stitching purposes, uh, is the Ozo Creator software. The other one's Ozo Remote. This is Ozo Creator. Uh, you can see here now my media is mounted, Ozo Media Module. And you can see I have lots of clips in there. Uh, 90, all, all these clips. So this is the, 95 is the one I just did. I'll go ahead and open Ozo Creator. And that's going to, again, preview what I've recorded, as well as output various formats for post, right? So it's not a full stitching program. It's not a finishing program. It's just an uh, in-between step. It gives you a preview, editorial files, uh, and, and sort of individual angles of high quality for finishing, finish stitching, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a clip here, import capture. I'm going to pull it right off of the, the media module here, go 95. And that's going to bring that clip right in that I just shot. And here it is. Uh, let's go ahead and just uh, play it back here. And you can see, if I cl click into it, and go to square, click into it, I can actually get a full preview of what I just did. There I am moving the camera around like a goofball. Yeah, there's my 360 file. And again, I can use my head-mounted display for this as well. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, quick way to see the, the file, as I said. And then from there, I could add it to a timeline down here. Uh, I can actually do some rough uh, editing, trimming of files here, and then choose to export the timeline in various formats, DPX for the highest quality, a quick file for editorial, very, a flattened file for editorial purposes, uh, high bitrate MP4, which would be right for some different stitching programs, and uh, just the audio itself spit out. I can also generate a preview file, which can be used in the Ozo preview software, which is here. So that's Nokia's idea, to keep it really simple, very straightforward. Uh, they stream a file out for live preview, you bring it into their software, you render out the angles, and let you do what you want to do in post. Uh, color uh, from auto pan color is a great option. Uh, video stitch is a great option. And at the high end, Nuke, those, those programs can take all those angles and do a great job putting them all back together again. Uh, Nokia really wanted to be open-ended there and allow you to decide what you want to do in post. Now, you may see that as a limit, but reality is everyone has a different workflow. So, uh, they render out the high quality files from one master, which is really straightforward compared to the alternative. So uh, that's, that's Nokia's idea. We're excited to have it here. Um, we've already tested it out a lot, and it's pretty impressive. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.